gentlemen, welcome all aboard the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad, the scenic railroad of the world. Now, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and introduce myself to you all. My name is Dimitri. I'm going to be your tour guide today. I would also like to introduce to you our very talented train crew and our roaming tour guides. Now, our roaming tour guides today are the wonderful Christina and Zane. They'll be coming through each train car to introduce themselves to you all shortly. Now, our talented train crew up in the front running that green and yellow diesel electric locomotive is our engineer, Mr. Tom Reeder. Our conductor, the man in charge of the train today, is conductor Brian Saul. And assisting him, the man second in command, is our brakeman Steve Washura. Those are the gentlemen that are going to be coming through and collecting that smaller side of the perforated ticket that you should have already torn off. Now at this time, folks, I do have some important safety announcements to go over with you. Since everyone is on board and seated, please lend me your attention for these important safety announcements. Now first and foremost, as you saw when boarding the train, there are platforms at the very front and back end of each train car. Now folks, while we are within Skagway city limits, these platforms need to remain clear. That means everyone should be inside the train car and seated. Now once we have cleared Skagway city limits, I will give you the okay so you can go out there and enjoy this beautiful Alaskan weather that we are having. But while within Skagway city limits, again folks, everyone should be inside in their seats. Also of note, very, very important, important is the fact that they, each train car is connected to the other by a thin metal bridge. Now our number one rule here at the White Pass Railroad is that there is no crossing from car to car. Once again, folks, there is no crossing from car to car. The car you boarded this morning is the car you're staying on for the entirety of our trip. Now, please make uh, sure you do not rest your hands or fingers in the door frames. If the door is propped open due to the rocking of our train or a strong canyon wind, it can shut without warning and we would not want to have any fingers in that door frame. This goes for any windows that may be propped open. Also on that note, please do not rest your hands on those very real stoves that are in each train car. Those stoves can get very, very warm. Now folks, if you do need assistance or would like the temperature change in your coach car, please do not attempt to adjust that stove yourself. Go ahead and let one of our train personnel know. Now folks, there is no smoking inside or outside of this train for the entirety of the trip. If we do catch you smoking, we're just going to assume that you're on fire and we're going to take all measures to put you out. Now there is also no consumption of alcohol at any point in time during this trip today. If you've brought something along with you, tuck it away and save it for the saloons in Skagway later on today. Now folks, uh, again, just as a reminder, that number one rule that we do have here is that there is no crossing from car to car. on the steamer Portland with stacks of yellow metal spread like wildfire amidst this country that was in a very deep depression. Now all through the summer and on into the winter of 1897 and early 98, stampeders poured into the newly created Alaskan tent and shack towns of Skagway and Dyee. 
Now Skagway here is and was the head of the White Pass Trail, and Dai was the head of the Chilkoot Trail. But folks, a little bit more on that later. anyone wanting to enjoy this beautiful warm weather we're having uh, we have cleared the city limits you are now free to go outside there onto the exterior platforms
accident. Al Janot and Maurice Dunn were working with their pack mules, and when the boulder dislodged, it crushed them, killing them instantly. Now, the foreman of the railroad at the time, Michael Heaney, was quoted as having said that no railroad worker could ever expect a finer monument than the black cross that he laid on top of the massive boulder in memoriam to all of the lives lost during the construction. Now, to view Black Cross Rock, folks, you're going to want to be looking sharply down on our left. As soon as the tree is clear, you're looking for that small black sign with white lettering on it. Now, the entire triangular piece of ground...
night. Now once at the summit, these guests were escorted to two tents, one for the women with decadence of sherry, and the other for the men, where they were greeted with cigars and a hard liquor. After being warmed by the blazing wood stove and spirits, the guests consumed an elaborate meal that included champagne and caviar. Speeches were made by Heaney and others, glasses raised for toasts, and rousing cheers filled the air. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the White Pass Summit. We have reached an elevation of 2,888 feet, and up to your left you can see the United States flag and the Canadian flag with that bronze obelisk. reached the White Pass Summit here. As you notice, we have come to a stop.